Well, hello again, and welcome to the Access 21 podcast. I'm Access 21 Executive Director John Rocco. Glad to be back with you. It's been a while since uh, Mr. COVID threw us all a curveball. It's been a while since we've had a chance to do a podcast, but we're glad we're back. And I'm very glad today to have with me as our guest, a Access 21 producer and a member of the Access 21 Board of Directors, Elder Earl Wright. Elder, thanks for being with us. Well, it's always my pleasure whenever I can come to the station, John. I wanted to start with how did you come to get involved at Access 21, first as a producer and then as a board member? Well, actually, I started uh, classes uh, back in the early 2000s, but the church organization that I was in, <clears throat> I was on the road a lot. So I had to cancel out. So about seven years ago, I came back to the studio and went through all the classes. And uh, I wanted to become a producer because the, the religious world is, is, is in chaos right now. And people are delivering all different types of messages as leading people astray. So I, I, I started the broadcast hoping that I could change someone's life. If I just changed one person, I'd be happy. And um, what kind of reaction have you gotten to your your broadcast? Well, I'm starting to get a lot of reaction now because I started broadcast. I, when I first started, I was on Tuesdays. Uh, but now I come on every Sunday at 6.30. <clears throat> and I'm getting a lot of calls. Uh, I have a couple of churches in Jamaica that the pastor have their members go on, on, on the website and watch the broadcast. I did a teaching on Matthews 5, 6, and 7. And I, I got like over eight 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 thousand views on it, people from Jamaica and other parts of the world. So talk a little bit about what you actually do on your show. Well, I mean it's it's a obviously it's a religious show, but give us a little more detail of exactly if I was to tune in, what would I see? Well, I'm a type of preacher that only teach people the Bible. That's all. On my show, God gives me a uh, abundance of scriptures to prepare. And then I read the scripture and I explain the scripture in the context that it is written, written in. God doesn't need no help with the Bible. A lot of preachers and teachers, they'll read scriptures and say, this is not what that means. They don't, they don't know what they're doing. There's no errors in the Bible. God is perfect. His word is perfect. And we can be perfect if we'll just follow his instruction. But mankind, they don't like to follow instruction. Uh, the apostle uh, Solomon wrote in Proverbs that man has a way that seems right to him, but it always leads to death. So the Bible is all you need. What would you say to someone who's listening and is thinking about maybe coming down and they they thought about having a show or finding out what Access 21 is all about, what, what what would you say to that person? Well, if you feel you have an idea, it doesn't have to be religious. Uh, the station accepts various different type of uh, broadcasts. Of course, you know, the contents sometimes but we may have to edit here. But if you have an idea or, or if you have something that you feel that would help other people and you want to make a difference, you come down and uh, if you live in Mecklenburg County, you take the classes and uh, you go through uh, on, on the job training. We teach you here how to use the equipment and everything. And then you, you're on your way. Has, so I assume you think it's been a positive experience. Oh, that, that's an understatement. It has really been a positive statement. And it changed, it changed my life. Uh, I'm one of the few preachers that, first of all, when I preach and teach, it goes to me first. So I preached to myself, and I learned to obey God. I learned to obey the Scriptures, and then I'm able now to teach you how to do it. It's, it's not going to be easy. You're going to have trials and tribulation, but you know that sooner or later, everything is just going to just level up. I have, a, I have a perfect life right now. Very few people can say that. How did you continue to do your show? We had, we had of course, the pandemic for the last two years, and we've seen— um, somewhat of a drop off of people coming into the studio because of the pandemic. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of our producers are continuing, have continued to do their shows outside of the 
facility. How, how have you managed that? Well, I have set up a recording studio in my house. Uh, a pastor friend of mine gave me a beautiful podium, and I was able to set up. And uh, so now I'm recording uh, from the house, and I probably will continue to record from the house <clears throat> until this uh, pand pandemic is over. And then you're going to come back to the studio. Yeah, yeah, sure. And then I, I'm, I'm eager to get in and do a podcast broadcast. But rarely I have guests on my show because, uh, you know, a lot of preachers and teachers, uh, some things in the Bible they don't believe. So if I was to have someone to come on my broadcast, they'd have to believe in the whole Bible. And then we'd all be in unison. And it won't be a confusion to the people that's listening because we'll all be doing and saying the same thing. Now you just mentioned how great you think your your life is right now, and I want to talk a little bit about your life prior to Access Twenty One. Now you have a background in the music business. Yes, so yes. Tell tell the audience a little bit about that. Well, I was a professional uh, rock and roll singer uh, from nineteen sixty eight till about nineteen eighty five. Uh, my record if you go to my facebook page you can actually see a, a, a copy of one of the records that i recorded in the in the late 60s but being a recording artist uh your promoter your manager they uh they make sure if you if you're well it doesn't matter whether you manage they make sure you have women and drugs if that was the case so in my case i got caught up in the drugs and i learned that i have a, an addictive personality, so I wasn't able to stop. So I had to give up singing, and I went into the church, and I found the Lord, and I went through uh, training. And I thank God that uh, I went into the training in, in Brooklyn, New York, in February uh, 1995, and I stayed until June. And I've never touched alcohol, drugs, cigarettes, gambling, none of that. I mean, God just took all that stuff away from me. Now, you also are a veteran. Yes, I am. And so, first of all, thank you for your service. And you served in Vietnam. Yes, I stayed in Vietnam two years. I didn't have to go to Vietnam because my brother, my older brother, he was already there. So this is an amazing story. So I drove my car to Washington, D.C. when I came back from Germany. Uh, I knew a colonel that I served under in, in Germany. He worked at the Pentagon. I got to the Pentagon parking lot at four o'clock in the morning and 10 to eight, this colonel pulled up right next to my car. I mean, it's just like, I don't know, thousands of parking space at the, uh, at the Pentagon. So he took me in and they sent me to Vietnam. But when I went to Vietnam, uh, the army was taking over an operation from the Navy. So I worked for the Navy for about a year and two months before the army, uh, uh, took it back, and I was a combat engineer. We build road, we build bridges, and so it was an interesting job. Very dangerous, but I thank God He brought me through that. But you also were injured, correct? Not in Vietnam. Not in Vietnam. No, not in Vietnam. Uh, what happened is <clears throat> I served in Vietnam in the sixties, so they were spraying that Agent Orange. Uh, during the time I was over there. So most veterans that were in there in the 60s, by the time they become 40 or 50, the agent only takes over. Like I had, uh, I have type 2 diabetes, and type 2 diabetes is the worst <laughs> diabetes you can have. Hmm. And, um, but a lot of the veterans, uh, well, I'm, I'm 78, and I'll be 79 in, in March. We, we take me in this in February. And uh, so, I mean, you know, God has just been standing by me and protecting me all my life. And that's what I wanted to ask you about because, you know, we've spoken, you know, just in the office and whatnot, and you're so positive about everything. And how, how is that? I mean, going to a horrible situation like Vietnam, getting sprayed with Agent Orange, having side effects from that, how do you remain so positive? Well, I've learned that the human body is nothing but a computer. Now your heart is the hard drive for your computer. Everything we do and say comes from our heart. 
So about four years ago, I haven't been doing this all my life, about four years ago, I started eliminating negativity from my life. I never say nothing negative, and I never think nothing negative. The thought of negativity enters my mind and my spirit seven days a day, but I block it out. I says not here. So I only think positive things. I only do positive things, and I'm teaching other people to do it. So because I'm putting all positive in my hard drive, then all I reap is harvest. You need to try this. Stop saying negative things. Don't you don't have to do it. Yeah, and I don't I don't want to continue to harp on your, it's your okay. military experience, but I've also heard you on multiple occasions talk about how much you love the country. And to a lot of people that may seem strange given your experience. I love this country. <clears throat> it is a great country. You know, I was born in 1943 in Charleston, South Carolina. So back then, uh, the South was still segregated. But when I became 17 years old, I joined the Army. And after basic training, they sent me to Germany. And I saw how people uh, from all different races can live together in harmony. I understand during World War II, there was a lot of uh, black GIs in Germany. The Germans loved, loved the black Americans. But today, I teach my people to stop looking back. I don't look back 200 years ago when uh, most black was enslaved. I go back 210 years ago when all those blacks that they went to Africa and got and, and brought them to America, they were all descendants of kings and queens and princes and kings. So when someone asks me my root, I go back to that era. I'm a descendant of kings queens, princes, and princesses. And I'm now, as a Christian, I'm also a descendant of God. So I am royalty. And I, whether someone acknowledges that or not, I know I am royalty. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a pretty powerful message for yeah. young people. Yes. who, And, you know, we hear a lot about, um, I know I have, you know, I have two teenagers. And I listen to them sometimes. And you wonder what kind of a, a world they're going to be living in. And sometimes it's discouraging. Yeah, I, I pity our youth. You know, the, the, the government uh, uh, has taken away, uh, as a senior citizen, the government took away uh, our senior citizen. Uh, they took the Social Security, uh, $360 billion they took from the Social Security Fund and gave it to banks and, and automobile industry. So a lot of uh, uh, senior citizens of my age are suffering who don't have an income or don't have other, other, other than a retirement income. And if the way they're going now, by the time I, I have, I'm worried about my grandchildren. My grandchildren are all under 11. My kids are all over 30, so I'm not worried about them. But our children, I fear for. I fear for. We used to have moral ethic and moral standards here in the United States. But now somehow... Uh, the negativity is going into the government, and and who do they attack? America's greatest hero, our World War One, our World War Two, our Korean, Vietnam veteran, and we stole their benefits of them. President Barack Obama, God been watching you. You did it, you and your entourage. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me go back uh, again. So after you got back from Vietnam, a lot of veterans unfortunately experienced a lot of negativity because of the the um, opposition to the war. Did you experience anything like that? No, I didn't experience anything like that. And one of the records that I recorded in 1968 was this soldier want to come home. It was about a soldier in Vietnam. He was fighting. He didn't know why he was there. And um, the, the record is called... Uh, this soldier want to come home. I know it's on my Facebook page. I'm not sure if it's on YouTube or not, but I know it's on my Facebook page. It's probably on YouTube too. Or you can just go to, go to YouTube or Google and type in uh, Earl Wright songs, and then that record will pop up. Now, are these songs you wrote? Are, are yeah. were, you, were you a solo artist or part yeah. of a group? I was a solo artist. Uh, I speak different languages. I play different in, uh, instruments. So I was an impressionist. Really? And, yeah, and I could imitate anybody. Now, I just 
as a black man, I, I didn't just do R and B and rhythm and blues. I could imitate Sinatra, Connie Francis, Johnny Cash. I did them all. And as a matter of fact, when I used to be the opening act for some of these stars, I would always come out and impersonate them, and then they would walk out. That would be the interest to come on cue. Because I've, I've worked with some of the top stars uh, since I came back uh, uh, to America after Vietnam. Any uh, juicy stories about any of them? No, uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't believe in tattletaling because sometimes every time someone tells, I won't a, tell anybody. Go ahead. But most of the time, when someone tells a story, <laughs> they're going to add or just take a little bit of, a bit away from it. I, it was a great experience for me, and uh, if I had to do it over again, I, I would do it up to to a point. But the only bad part was I got hooked on the drugs. But like I said, it, it, that's gone. That's gone. Yeah. So you're obviously a creative person. Yes. And so how much of that do you use, the, those talents, in your program that you do here on the channel? Well, you know, as the saying, honesty is the best policy. You know, I'm not ashamed on my broadcast. I had so many different bad things happen in my life, and I use them as an example. Uh, for example, I was molested as a as a child. I was only about seven, eight years old. Mm. And I was in, living in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, my aunt came to Charleston and got me and took me to New York. I had a beautiful life. I was the only child, all the toys in all the world. But my cousin kept molesting me. I couldn't take the pain I left. Mm. When I became a man, I went into the retail business. This guy came to me for a job, and I gave him a job. The not, molester. That molester, that molester. Not only did I give him a job, I put him in business. We had changed the stores. I, 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 put, I gave him a job delivering circles. He did floors. I gave him a job doing the floor. And not once did he say, cousin, you know, uh, I'm sorry. I, I did this to you. But he died about 48 years, and he, he died a horrible death. But I, I don't hate him. I don't hate him. You know, once something has happened, you, you can't change it. And people should take this. A lot of bad things. Let it go. Let it go. Call on God. But stop looking back. There's nothing back there but pain. That's what I look ahead. And I'm already in tomorrow. The, today is gone. So I don't even worry about tomorrow because I know when I get there, God is there. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, I mean, this just adds a whole other layer, this, this story, that it's even more amazing to me about how positive you actually are. Mm -hmm. Totally positive, totally positive. And there's a scripture in Philippians 4.13 that says, I can do all things through Christ, which is my strength. I can make a statement that probably the richest person in the world can't make right now. I'm sitting here today, John, I don't have not one problem, not one problem that needs resolved. I don't have one want that I need. God has blessed me with everything I've got, and I'm happy. And I came to God in 1995. My entire estate was a shopping bag full of clothes, mm. a shopping bag full of clothes. Now, I work with a lot of church organizations. Whenever I minister for a church, I, I charge them $1 a year. I don't take salary, so everything I have, God gave me, and, I, and I'm grateful. But I know David says, I look to the hills from whence comes my help. I know who's my helper, the good Lord. Well, it's really an amazing story, and uh, I, I hope a lot of the audience is is uh, affected by it because it really is. Um, I, I I try to be a positive person myself, and it's always uh, you know there are so many people who are just so down and negative, like every day, you know. And I personally, I can't. I can't be around that. You know, it's like you're bringing me down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've got to, you know, get, 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 you know, it. I always say, you know, you only have one life, you know, and yeah. what are you doing? What are you doing? You know, it's spending it being miserable. Remember I said your body is like a computer. Now, there are people that someone could come into their space and make them angry. Now, when you allow someone to make you angry, that means you've lost control of your life. They're controlling your life. In Psalms 37 and 8, it says, cease from anger. That means stop. You don't have to get angry. 
when someone say something that would make you angry, you just you, you either walk away or you just don't have to answer them. You understand? But when you when you respond, you have made their day. When people say something to me that's negative or some people don't like me, I say, hey, thank you, thank you for sharing, and may God bless you. And I just walk away. You see, practice make perfect. You you're not going to automatically do these things. You've got to to be conscious of what you're doing every minute, every hour of the day. When someone says something to me, I take a split second and say, can I answer in love? And if I can't answer love, thanks for sharing, and I'm out of there. Yeah. Yeah, it's sad sometimes, you know, when you see people, you see um, a homeless person, yeah, yeah. and you wonder, you know, what happened? You know, how, because certainly no one's born into that situation. Something, something terrible's happened to create that situation for that person. Yeah, well, you have a lot of people that are in some awful situation. There are a lot of people in awful marriages. When when you have it in your home, now it's hard to, harder to deal with it, but you can still deal with it even if it's in your home. But you have to take control. First uh, Thessalonians four and four says you must learn to control your vessel, so you can control what you say. You can control what you do. You're the only one really that control it. But when you allow someone to interfere and corrupt your day, you've lost control. They're not losing control. Well, I would encourage our audience uh, that's listening to tune in to your show, which is entitled... Ye Shall Know the Truth. <laughs> and it's on when? It's on uh, Access 21 at 6.30 every Sunday. Yeah, tune in. Uh, there's always something... Uh, it's always something in the broadcast that will get your attention because I give revelation to the scriptures that most preachers don't have. You see, God doesn't show every preacher because not every preacher belongs to God, all the secrets in the Bible. Do you understand? There are, the scriptures hold many secrets, but God will help you to discern him if you ask him. So you, if you're having a problem in your life, I would just ask you to turn to God and ask him to help you. There's something that I do. God hates sin. There's something that I do every day, seven days a week. And I'll pray. I says, Lord, I love you. And Lord, I repent. When you say that, Lord, I love you. Lord, I repent. Then there's no sin in your body. So God can come in your presence and you will see him eventually. You just, you, but you have to do your part. You have to love everybody. That is a secret. You have to love everybody. If you don't love everybody, you don't love God. Because if you go back to Genesis 1, it was God who created every human being. So every human being, no matter who they are, saint or sinner, they belong to God. So treat everybody the way you would love to be treated. Everybody's not going to treat you good, but so what? That's no big deal. When I'm mistreated, I, I'm happy because I'm in good company. They mistreated Jesus for over 33 years. So that's how I look at it. Man, when you, you slap me, I'm going to turn the other cheek. A lot of men said, no, you better not slap me. I hear a lot of priests say, don't slap me. And if you slap me again, I'll turn the other cheek. But if you probably slap me a third time, God probably knock you dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to do that at all because <laughs> I appreciate um, everything you do. And now you're on the uh, Access 21 board. Yes, uh, I, I'm privileged to be uh, not only a producer, but also uh, a board member. And if you if you having problems or anything, you can contact me. My information is on the board here in the studio. Or you watch every one of my broadcasts. I have all my contact information. Uh, Bishop Earl Wright, um, Post Office Box uh, 382, Pineville, North Carolina, 28134. Or you can email eWright75 e at carolina.rr.com. Or you can call me. 704-340-0221. Well, I'm very happy that you were able to spend a few minutes with us, and I hope the audience was uh, as intrigued as I was about your fascinating background. Well, I owe it all to God. I owe it all to God. And I, I, I'm, I'm pleased with the life I live. I'm at peace with the world. I'm at peace with my children. But learn to love everybody. 
Learn to love everybody. You're going to have to do that. You're going to have to do it. And learn to forgive everybody. If you love everybody and you learn to forgive everybody, your whole life will change. And start saying every day, Lord, I love you. Lord, I repent. And watch what happens in the next 30 days. Well, Elder Wright, thanks again for being with us. And uh, we'll see you see your around the studio and on the channel. All right. And every morning I wake up, I look up and I say, go ahead, God, make my day. And that's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, if you'd like to have your um, own program or podcast on Access 21, feel free to uh, check out our website at tvaccess21.com or you can give us a call at 704-377-8988. I'd like to thank once again our engineer for this program, James Rossi. Yes, thank you, James. And uh, also remind you that this uh, podcast was uh, recorded at the facilities of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Public Access Corporation. So until we see you again, this is uh, Executive Director John Rocco. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.